Hello and welcome to our next tutorial. Today I will talk about tagging. Tagging is a key functionality of StableNet allowing you to organize all your relevant network data precisely as you desire. It gives you great possibilities for flexible filtering and grouping and that way you can show individual trees with multiple different views as you like it. You have all the data directly as you like and also for analysis and f further reporting it's really helpful. Um, namely, today I will talk about tagging in general, about tags and tag categories, about tag filters and tag trees. There are a lot of different use cases where tagging is used as this is a very central concept in StableNet. And you can see a lot of these use cases in practice in different videos that you can find on YouTube as well. Um, so I will not cover all these different use cases in detail today. There is also on the docs portal in the documentation of StableNet, there is a, a very long chapter about tagging where you can get a, a lot of additional details starting with terms and definitions and a, a lot of additional information. So for uh, exhaustive reference, please uh, refer to this uh, documentation as well. Today I will focus on giving a live demo of some of the key features around the tagging concept and how this is being used in practice. So to that end, let's first start with looking at one device and the tags related to that device. And uh, to that end, I'm here in one of the stable net trees, which is actually also built based on tags, but I will cover this uh, later on in this tutorial. And first, let's uh, look into this device by uh, right-clicking and opening the Manage Text dialog. So here in the Manage Text dialog, we can actually see the different uh, tags of um, this selected device. The device is in this case a taggable object because it can be tagged as most of the things in StableNet can be tagged. And there are three different types of tags. There are attribute tags, custom tags, and inherited tags. So let's start with the attribute tags. Attribute uh, tags are those tags of a, of a device or of an object in StableNet that will automatically be filled by the system um, and uh, that are already uh, predefined, uh, like the tag categories are predefined. The values will, will be set during discovery or can also be set using, for instance, the REST API. So now um, each of these tags, you can imagine each of these tags like a label that you are putting on the device. And for instance, if you put a name tag on the device, so you are actually assigning a tag for the device name, we are talking in StableNet using the terminology that the tag category is device name and the tag value is the actual value. So in this case, the device has a name V1CR1 and so on and so forth. So the device name tag, is, has this value and the category is device name. And obviously each of the other devices will also have a value in the tag category device name. Another example of a uh, attribute tag would be the device vendor, where the tag category is device vendor. And in this case, the value is Cisco, as we are looking into a Cisco device. And uh, you could find uh, further examples here like geo, latitude, and longitude, uh, agent names that are uh, like the name of the agent that is being used here. So those are the attribute tags that are already predefined. Besides the attribute tags, there's the possibility of defining custom tags. So for each taggable object in StableNet, in addition, you can define uh, custom tag categories and assign values to these tag categories. And in the system, the demo system we are using here in this tutorial, you will see that there are different custom tags being assigned. One uh, sort of custom tag is here the level zero, level one, level two tag category, which is basically used for building one of the tree structures. But there is also, for instance, a, a custom tag, which is called VLAB, which is assigning some additional information for that uh, device in the VLAB context for, for our virtual lab we have here in the demo set. And there is a city tag, which is containing a city name. And uh, you can uh, define arbitrary additional tags um, depending on your use case. The third category of tags we have in StableNet are so-called inherited tags. Um, inherited tags 
are, for instance, uh, are the, the idea of inherited tax is that with these in inherited tax, you are basically directly assigning tax automatically to a taggable according to other taggables that are related to this object. So in the case of devices, you might, for instance, know that in StableNet, each device uh, has a number of measurements and each measurement has a number of monitors. And so, for instance, it might be interesting for a um, device that you are look, looking at, not to just look at the tags of that device itself, but also uh, at the tags that are related to, for instance, the measurements of that device. So for instance, if I'm looking here at the uh, measurement types, let's say, then I actually see for this device that this device has different measurement types, which actually means that there are different measurements, which are uh, children in the tree of this device, which are uh, uh, inheritance of this, devi this device, which are ping measurements, SNMP template measurements, SNMP trap measurements, and status measurements. And that way, I have the possibility to also get these inherited tags on another object. So in this case, I'm looking at the device level, but I see all the inherited tags which are related, for instance, to the measurement that belong to this device. Let's pick a second example here. For instance, if I look at the measurement name, I will get actually all the measurement names of the um, of the device that uh, uh, um, uh, of of all the measurements that belong to this device, and I will just here uh, now click show all, so you can get a full overview and make maybe make this full screen, so you can see that this device is inheriting some of the text from the agent it is measured with. It is. Um, inheriting tags of the backups, of the um, device domains, device modules, and so you know, of the interfaces. So this um, is basically, technically, it's like joining different tables of tag attributes for, for different uh, tag domains, for different um, sorts of taggables, devices, measurements, interfaces, links, and so on and so forth. But it actually technically gives you the possibility to then uh, really powerfully uh, filter on different um, elements and also use this for, uh, for grouping in, in tag trees, for instance. So maybe the last example I pick here for the ca uh, case of the tutorial, if we look at the link tags, we are, which are also inherited tags of the device, these are actually the tags which are belonging to all of the links that are starting or ending at this device. So in, in this case, if I'm looking at the link destination device name, I'm, for instance, getting all the neighborhood of my device that I currently selected because those are all the other um, links that are ending um, or starting with the device. Or to be really precise, I should actually combine the link source device name and the link destination device name to get the full list. But this way, I can, um, can also get such sort of information. So maybe uh, for now, this is enough for the tags in general and the type of tags, so attribute tags, custom tags, and inherited tags. So let's, let's now, uh, based on these tags, uh, next look into uh, the tag categories, maybe. So I have told you that there are different tag categories. And uh, here in the tagging menu, we can actually go to these tag categories, and there we can actually see all the different types. So we have the attribute, the predefined, and the custom tag categories. And um, predefined is actually a subset of the attribute uh, tag categories. And here you can get a full overview. And you can also see that uh, not all of the custom, if, if I'm filtering here, for instance, the, the type on custom, then you can see that not all uh, custom uh, tag categories are obviously assigned for devices, but some are assigned for links or for measurements or for jobs and so on and so forth. But according to the inheritance, you can then also reach them um, on other uh, uh, in, in, in other taggables if there is an inheritance. So these are the tag categories. Here I can create new tag categories and I can also for a given tag category, for instance, if I'm looking at uh, uh, which one am I looking at here at the city, for instance, I can show the usage so I can see all the devices that are tagged with this tag category um, city. So here I see a list It's 34 devices being tagged and I also can get a, a list of the different values that are being used currently. 
So, so much about maybe tech categories. Now let's go a little bit into tech filtering. For the tech filtering, I will first go here into a taggable table, a tab, ta table of taggables. And in this table, I can actually first select the domain that I want to look at. So let's, for instance, say I'm looking at the devices. And uh, first, uh, before doing anything else, I'm just here clicking apply. So I get all 127 devices that are here on my demo system. So I get just a full list. And in this list, I can actually see in a table all the different devices with all their tags that are being assigned. And I, I can also show this here. If I'm going on order columns, you can see everything which is here, which is also containing these, these tags. For instance, the city tag that we had before. And um, this gives me a possibility to get a quick overview on all of my taggables of a given domain. So in this case, the device domain. And now uh, let's say I want to filter here a little bit. So let's say I don't want to have all devices, but maybe I just want to have devices <laughs> where the device name is actually containing, uh, let's say the word AP minus. Okay, there we are. So now I'm getting a subset of 22 devices and I'm actually having, this was a very simple filter, I'm actually tag filtering on, on a device name and getting all these devices where the name contains AP minus. <clears throat> now maybe I want to um, actually, I'm just looking, maybe I just want to, um, want to have these um, devices which actually contain HQ, just to give a second example, so I can change that here. And I just say it contains HQ. And there we go. It's 23. <clears throat> so there is one which is not containing the AP, but still containing the HQ. So this is a simple filter. But I can also do much uh, more advanced filters. So first of all, I can here work with a concrete equals, which is a precise match rather than a contains match. I can also work with regular expressions. Uh, if you want to see more exhaustive examples here, um, you can see us using this in other tutorial videos and snapshot videos as well. <clears throat> and I can also use um, advanced tag filtering here. So in the advanced tag filtering, you actually have the possibility to arbitrarily combine the different sorts of filters. So you typically start with an AND or OR filter on the top level, which is either like um, uh, expecting all of the conditions to be true or at least one condition to be true. And then on the lower level, you um, actually start combining, um, you, you can start combining <clears throat> the different uh, filters. So there's an equals filter, which I shown, uh, have shown before. There's a contains filter, a regex filter. There is also an exists filter. So here I can, for instance, say, please show only the devices which actually have a tag city. So if I'm using this one, for instance, I get only 34 devices. This, these are the 34 devices that actually contain a city tag. So I can double check this by maybe disabling most of the columns here and just focusing on the city. So you can actually see that the city tag is available for all these devices. But I can also, for the sake maybe of the example, invert this and now get all the other devices, which is 93, like the rest of the 127 devices I have in my system. Those are all those that do not contain the city tag. <clears throat> so just double checking this here. Where's the city? The city is not even shown as a tag because I don't have a, a sing, single device matching it. So the column is not even available in this case. Exactly, there we go. So now maybe let's look into more options. So this was the exists uh, tag filter. We have a state filter, which is helping to filter on those devices that are in a specific state. Uh, we have an access filter as well, where you can uh, filter on certain user groups. And we also have a reference filter where you can basically filter uh, on a different filter that you have predefined already. So there's also the possibility to copy paste filters. There's the possibility to, to load predefined filters and so on and so forth. So um, maybe one more thing I can show you here is I can also easily copy paste filters from that dialog and use them somewhere else. You can also see us doing this in other tutorials. So there is either a button for copying or I can choose, just use control C on my um, keyboard. And if I'm then going to another program and pasting it, I can actually get my filter here um, as an XML um, 
uh, <coughs> structured filter. Uh, from release 11 on, there's also a possibility of writing these filters even shorter using the tech filter query language, but this is um, a topic for a separate uh, snapshot series webinar that we will cover. Yes, so this is for the tech filters. So they can be arbitrarily complex, maybe just, uh, yeah, maybe just here going back to the interface to the predefined tag filter. So I can just maybe open one or two to show you some examples. So if I'm modifying this, you can see that, okay, this is an easy one, which is basically filtering on, on Cisco devices and that's it. Uh, this is another one, which is uh, here. This is some more complex filter, which is actually filtering on all uh, devices that are matching the tech filter VLAB Juniper or the tech filter VLAB Cisco and which are in addition not having the name ROGAT. So we are explicitly excluding the device which is called ROGAT. And I, I can also, again, I can copy paste this and I can show you that this can also be written in an XML structure. It's an AND tag filter with an OR tag filter for a reference tag filter and a value tag filter with an inverted true. So this can also be used then for instance, in REST API commands. So those of you who know me giving tutorials will know that I'm always jumping from the GUI to REST API and back and forth. So now I'm jumping to Insomnia and I'm actually first running here on my demo server, a devices list command using REST where I'm getting all the different devices. And then now I'm copy pasting that filter and I'm running the, the same thing again. And in this case, I'm just getting a subset of the devices with which are fitting to my filter. So this can also be used using REST. Um, maybe so much for this tutorial about this topic. So summing up so far, we have tags, we have tag categories, we have the tag filtering, and in the taggable, uh, in the taggable table, we can actually use these filters to filter on uh, arbitrary tags <coughs> for different tag domains. Maybe one last thing I can show here is that you can also combine the different tag domains. So for instance, in this case, let's now look into interfaces and filter on these interfaces where the device related to the interface contains a city. So I'm using the same thing and I'm just applying this. So I get 1,048 interfaces. So this means that the 34 devices that I have with city names have 1,048 um, interfaces. And here, as I selected the tech domain interface, right now I'm just getting the interface names, but I don't see the device information yet. So for this, I'm now adding the tech domain device and I'm reapplying this. And now I actually get the interface information and the device information. And if I will filter a little bit, you will see this more clearly. So I will remove all the columns and I will just leave the device name, putting it to the front, then the interface name, then let's say the city of the, of the device and maybe the IP address, just so much, maybe the interface speed, there we go. And now I have a short table where I have the device and the interface. Then I have the IP address of the device. I have the interface speed, which is not always uh, configured here uh, in, in this case. And then I have the city of the device. So I'm here combining two different tech domains and I could equally combine even more tech domains. So if I'm adding, for instance, the measurement tech domain, now I'm getting all the columns back and you will see that uh, you also have the the measurement tags as uh, as far as they are being set. So not for each of the device you have these me measurement tags, but you can see that they are also available. So maybe so much about the tag filtering and the taggable table. So now to close my tutorial, the last topic I want to look at are the tag trees. The tag trees are a very powerful functionality which based on the tags give you the possibility to structure your data in an adequate way so that you can have quick access to the right data uh, for the current use case you want to look at. So um, the idea of the tag trees in general can be seen here. You are using different tag categories and defining by the tag categories which level comes first in your tree, which level, level comes second, which level comes third, and so on and so forth. And that way you directly have your tree structured by a certain structure. And if you are changing the tag tree to another one uh, for another use case, for instance, or here changing to the default measurement tree, then the data is um, um, structured in a different 
different way and gives you quick access to what you specifically want to look at in this case. So now let's look a little bit at these tag trees how they are uh, looking in practice. So let's start with that use case overview tree. To that end, I'm here going to the tech tree configurations dialog, and I'm looking into that use case overview tree, and I'm going to modify to see it. So besides the name and the description, the most important thing here is the tree structure. So you can see that on the first level, <clears throat> you actually have the, the use case device. Um, then you have a level category, a level VLAB, a level department. And these different cat categories are actually being used, uh, categories are actually being used to, um, to define the structure of that tree. So this is quite a complex example, but um, at the end of the day, what you see happening is that depending on where the device is being configured, it's actually ending up in that tree. So let's just put the one next to the other. So here we have, uh, let's just open the, the of, of this device here. Let's just see, um, okay, this, um, I have to close that first. And I have to close this before I can actually open the manage text dialog. Yeah, there we are. So here I have the manage text dialog and I have some use case device, which is inventory, which is the top level, if we remember correctly. So this is why it's uh, first entered into inventory. And then the next one was actually the VLAB, which is the level two. So, so that way uh, the structure of this uh, tree is, <clears throat> is given. So let's maybe look at a, at a more simple example. The, the most simple uh, default tree that we have is actually using the, the different levels that are pre-configured. <clears throat> so you can just easily define level zero, level one, level two, and depending on how you define those, you know that the first hierarchy level will be level zero, then level one, level two, and so on and so forth. So this is the most straightforward but we can also, for instance, let's say we are actually creating a new tree, which is a device tree by vendor. And in this case, the first level we want to have <clears throat> is actually the tech category vendor. So we want the device vendor to be the first level and be below that we want to have the devices. And this is actually the minimum example I can do. If I do a tree preview, I actually get here the tree sorted by the different vendors. So Skill, Juniper, Linux, Microsoft, VMware. And now I can actually say that um, uh, I, uh, I can now um, provide here additional information. So the device is mandatory. I can say that if the vendor is not set, then it's, uh, it's actually removed. So in this case, I'm only getting the devices where I have a vendor set and the other devices are not being shown. Um, if below the devices, as in the measurement tree, I want to have, for instance, the measurement and the monitors, then I can add these tech domains here, and that way I can structure my tree. So now I have actually the devices, and underneath the devices I have the measurements, and underneath the measurements I have the monitors. So this is similar like in the measurement tree, in the default measurement tree. So um, here you can, as I showed, here you can define the structure, and then in the next step you can also um, define how the devices are, for instance, shown or how the elements are shown in the tree. So for instance, let's say I don't want to show the devices just with their device name, but I want to have the IP address beforehand. So here I can, for instance, say I'm adding a, a second attribute to the front of the description, and this is actually the IP address of the device. There we go. And I'm actually sorting by the name. So if I'm looking at the tree preview, in this case, actually now each of the devices is preceded with their IP address. So this is a possibility also to further structure that tech tree and to get additional information on. Um, and last but not least, I can also for the tech tree again use the filters. So for instance, I could say rather than showing all devices here, I'm just filtering on my VLAB without ROGET filter that we have seen before and do the tree preview again. And this ends up with me only having Cisco and Juniper devices here. Uh, because those are the only ones matching the filter. So I'm only seeing the Cisco and Juniper devices with the IP address preceding. And from there I have the measurements and the monitors. And um, 
as you could see before, all of this uh, can be arbitrarily configured here. You can use the same things that I quickly showed in the context of tag filters, and uh, this gives you the full flexibility. The rest is just here, the, the role concept, but I will actually cancel this and not save it. So summing up what I showed in this tutorial, I've told you something about tagging in general as a central concept of StableNet that can be used all over the place. Um, I have shown you a different example tags of a device and a measurement and an interface to show you what attribute tags, custom tags, and inherited tags are. Then we have um, looked into tag categories and into the taggable table to get an example how uh, different tag filters can be used. I've quickly uh, used the REST API to show you an example of the tag filters using the REST API. And last but not least, I ended here with the tag tag tree to give you an overview how flexible the tag trees are and how you can arbitrarily define the structure of your trees and the hierarchy using uh, tagging. Um, thank you very much uh, for um, passing by today and for looking at this tutorial together with me and have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.